Lotus is not Ferrari. It has not McLaren. And it has not Porsche. What it has in common with those companies is that it manufactures cars. Barely. Despite the well-fated glory of seven Formula One Constructor S World Championships, Lotus S struggles with solvency today are real. In the last decade it has seen three CEOs, the creation and collapse of a plan for five redesigned models, and the full-year delay of the most promising car it offers to the biggest sports car market on Earth, the United States. But we've finally driven that car the new to the US EVA ERA 400 and it was good. The EVA ERA 400 The 400 is for the horsepower produced by its Toyota-sourced supercharged and intercooled 3.5-liter V6 is a genuinely refreshing machine. Wispy, strikingly well-made, and communicative, it has a car for people who want to be engaged deeply by what they drive and that has not something we say about all British sports cars. The EVA ERA 400 builds on the brand's signature attribute, efficiency. And by that we don't team mean good fuel economy. We mean the same thing Tony Rudd, former Lotus engineering director, meant when he wrote his infamous 1975 memo that was glowingly approved by founder Colin Chapman. To paraphrase Rudd, the most elegantly effective solution is the one with the least number of parts, effectively deployed. The rewords that still bear fruit at Lotus today. Lotus, the smallest company selling cars in this country, manages to squeeze masterful machines for discerning drivers from a tiny factory in Hethel, England, where each one is assembled by hand. Its Lotus Cars arm employs a team of 10 people in the US while the entire company, including the Lotus Engineering Consultancy, is about 850 strong worldwide. Lotus is to sports cars what libertarian Gary Johnson is to presidential candidates, an offbeat alternative to the choices made by the masses. That the new Eva era is here at all is a testament to the raw fortitude of a few. That it works as well as it does is almost alarming. What matters about the Eva era is not Lotus's financial stability or its cash flow or even its slider is better ethos. What matters is the same thing that matters about any sports car, how it drives. If it has personality you want, the Eva Ura will indulge. Built without the economies of scale, it offers instead the obstinacy of raw ingenuity and resourcefulness. Relatively light steering effort delivers immediate response. The Eva Ura understeers in one T-spin without manipulation of the throttle and steering in search of such behavior. As long as you don't operate it with impunity, it offers ample warning about its next move. It rotates about the center of the cabin in a way that makes the sensation of turning less obvious than in, say, a Corvette, where you sit farther from the midpoint. That's not a bad thing. Like many mid-engine cars, pitch changes are evident in the Eva era. Its nose jumps with every jab at the throttle and dives slightly under heavy braking personality traits that contribute to its slow tightness. It has alive in the same way as all other mid-engine Lotus road cars going back to the 1966 Europa, but it lacks the hyper-chipmunk nervousness of an Exige or Elise. It has as honest about its intentions as it is quick. Even 400 horsepower is not enough to overwhelm the balanced demeanor of the chassis. But its acceleration though S&T feel as strong as a 400 horsepower, 3,200 pound sports car should. And until we re able to test one, we LL stick with saying it has only as quick as the last Eva or S we tested, which hit 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds and crossed the quarter mile in 12.8 seconds at 110 miles per hour. Braking is stunning. Four piston calipers all around and larger two-piece fodders than were on the Eva or S seem to be utterly indifferent to abuse. They work as if they were sized for a car 1,000 pounds heavier. In fact, the car we drove endured more than 100 laps of a challenging road course without a pad change or significant reduction in performance. Carbon ceramic brakes are in T available and were in T considered for several reasons, they re costly, unnecessary, and customers don't e demand them. There is also a lot of grip here. Lotus uses Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires developed originally for BMW. 
The 235 section width front rubber is wider than the front tires on the far more powerful McLaren 570S. Three drive modes drive, sport, and race adjust throttle response and loosen the reins of the stability control. Stability control also can be fully disabled but will, frustratingly, re-engage with the slightest overlap of throttle and brake pedals while left foot braking. Damping is fixed rate, a product of limited resources and Lotus S firm belief that a single, well-tuned calibration suffices. It has an assertion that holds water only in the absence of several less costly competitors with fantastic adaptive damping systems. Even so, given its intentions and on-track ability, the EVA RS ride is quite bearable. This is probably the quickest EVA Ura Lotus has ever built and, indeed, it has 7 seconds, that s a lifetime, folks, quicker than was the EVA Ura S around the company S2.2 mile test track. Helping the cause are a new front splitter and a 3 element rear wing that together yield 71 pounds of downforce at 150 miles per hour. This EVA Ura 400 gains 55 horsepower over the S model last sold here in 2014. The power gains are a product of air to water intercooling and 9 pounds of supercharged boost from an Edelbrock blower. The S was supercharged but not intercooled. Internally, the Toyota 3.5 liter 2 GFA V6 remains unchanged. A 6-speed manual transmission and a person limited slip differential are standard equipment. A $2,700 six-speed paddle shifted automatic is optional, but those who choose to pedal driving will do without the torsion dip. Although it uses the same extruded and bonded aluminum construction as the previous EVA era, the revised chassis shaves a claimed 6.6 pounds, offers the same torsional stiffness, and has smaller rocker sills, which ease the chore of getting in and out of it. The EVA Ura 400 adds side airbags and makes meaningful leaps in quality over the car it replaces. Two $3,400 interior trim options are offered either leather or micro seaweed and both look fantastic. Steel breakers are now absent in the cabin, too, with touch points that feel solid. The only real ergonomic flop is a somewhat awkward offset pedal location, an inconvenience that faded to insignificance on our drive. But this isn't a super cap, it has a Lotus. And that makes it, well, the eccentric cousin of mainstream sports cars. Even the little things are different at Lotus. So keen is the focus on maximizing resources that the seatback adjustment knob shares its repurposed shape with the fuel cap on early Esprit. Jean Marc Ailes, Lotus CEO, is sensitive enough to the company's financial needs that he is not afraid to admit that the EVA RS switchgear is shared with Ford and GM products. He is also a simple pragmatist, admitting honestly that Lotus 1T offer a carbon fiber chassis in the next 10 years. Doing so would add cost and compromise ingress and egress, according to Gales. All the same, the EVA Ura S Plus 2 rear seating is smaller, harder to access, and less useful than a Porsche 911 S. How, then, does this Lotus measure against standard errors such as, say, Porsche S 718 Cayman S or a Corvette Grand Sport, both of which will cost less than the $93,785 EVA Ura 400? Put simply, it has a tough sell. Lotus makes a compelling case for its do a lot with a little strategy, but when measured against the best, it has only occasionally better, think brakes. The competitive set surely includes the Jaguar F-Type and the Alfa Romeo 4C, which also stand apart from the mainstream but have more marketing might and a larger dealer bass at their backs. And that s the rub for Lotus. Independent of the obvious effort expended on making the EVA Ura 400 a genuinely viable choice, the car will always come with certain compromises. But, hey, Lotuses always have. And for some buyers, that's where the magic lies. They focus not on the sacrifices and such trade-offs but on the benefits that come in return. No EVA Ura 400 driver is likely to suffer the indignity of parking next to another one. And there is value in exclusivity, especially when it drives like this, like this.